Glioblastomas are the most common malignant brain tumor. Over 61% of them occur within the forelobes of the brain, with 25% of those 61% occurring within the frontal lobe. Glioblastomas are typically classified into two types. The primary type arises de novo with no known precursor, but the secondary type arises due to transformation of a previously existing low-grade tumor. These tumors can be further categorized into four subtypes, classical, neural, proneural, and mesenchymal. I will not be discussing the depths of these subtypes in this video, but more information about these can be found in the article linked in the notes section below. Interruption in our physiologic signaling pathways plays a significant role in the development of cancer. When it comes to glioblastomas, there are many pathways that can be disrupted. However, there are three distinctive pathways that current literature seems to pay the most attention to. These are the tumor protein P53 pathway, the receptor tyrosine kinase RAS P3K pathway, and the retinoblastoma pathways. These pathways become activated, leading to uncontrollable cell proliferation and enhanced cell survival, ultimately leading to the progression of glioblastomas. Now that we know a little bit about glioblastomas, I'm going to show you 3D images that I rendered from 2D T1 MRI scans. My hope is that by seeing these tumors in 3D context, you may better appreciate the pathology. In this specific data set, the brain has been colored red, the tumor itself is green, and the cystic component is orange. In the image we just saw, the brain was made transparent. In the one you see now, the tumor has also been made transparent. This should provide a better view of just how large the cystic component is. For context, 5.6% of this patient's brain is composed of tumor, while 0.2% is composed of cystic components. The median age of patients who present with glioblastomas is around 64 years old. Presentation varies greatly depending on size and location of mass, but 25% of patients do have seizures as presenting symptoms. Common symptoms include increased intracranial pressure leading to headache and neurologic deficits. The average prognosis is around 15 months. Common complications include peritumoral edema, venous thromboembolism, seizures, and cognitive dysfunction. When treating glioblastomas, current literature seems to agree on a treatment plan. The first step taken is maximal surgical resection. This step is often tricky as the tumors may be located in spaces of great importance. For instance, if the tumor is somewhere near areas necessary for motor function or speech control, surgery is risky. However, many studies have shown its importance despite its great risk. The surgical resection is then followed by a combo radiation and chemotherapy treatment plan utilizing tembozolamide. Temozolomide, also known as Temidar, is an oral alkylating agent. Now that we have talked about current treatment, I'm going to show a real-life example of what that treatment can do. The first 3D rendered images I showed you were taken of a patient in 2006. The next set of images I will show are of that same patient in 2007, approximately one year after his original diagnosis. While the study was anonymized and the treatment plan utilized for this specific patient is unknown, it is safe to assume that he may have been treated with a similar regimen. Like before, the first image showed the tumor and cystic components with the brain transparent around them. This new image shows the same, but with the tumor transparent as well to allow optimal visualization of all parts of the pathology. For context, the 2006 scans are shown on the left and the 2007 scans are shown on the right. The left shows 5.7% of the brain composed of pathology related to the glioblastoma, while the right shows only 1.7% of pathologic material.